I am Terry, and I am a volunteer here, and my thought when I first got here is that I was really interested in the art and architecture inside the church, and this right here is the most beautiful part. This is the sanctuary. Please look up. This is amazing. They used mostly mineral paints, ochreous hematite, malachite, things like that. That part of the dome was painted blue at one point, but they know it was blue because when the plaster started falling, they could tell that there was a layer of blue in between two layers of white gypsum. So then you come down a little bit further and you see the cornice right up there that's painted the orange, again, that ochreous hematite. Just below that, the little black squares. Of a naive interpretation, a trompe l'oeil, as it were, of bracketed cornices. Well, this is supposed to be in a vision of holding this cornice up. If you come further down the wall, you can see up there the stenciling. Those likely, those stencils were made of maybe parchment, maybe leather, something like that. There's never been any trace of any animal protein indicating that this was not a tempera paint. There was no milk or egg or anything like that in it. And this was all done. It wasn't al fresco. It wasn't wet on wet. It was actually wet on dry. Coming down a little bit further on the wall, you can see those arched what look like stones. Those were incised. That gray color very likely was something like soot mixed with white. Beautiful little chalices painted up there. And right next to it, a little bunch of grapes. On this side, it was wheat, but it's pretty much disappeared now. Pretty much all you can see is the ghost of the pigment that was there. And underneath the arch right here, the blue. Like I said, most of the colors in here would have been minerals. That blue was probably something, it's probably indigo, and indigo is more of a stain than it is a paint, which may be the reason that it's stuck on there so long. The little medallion in the middle of the arch up there, those blue chevrons that you see up there actually started life as red. Something happened, there was some impurity in the pigment, so those are now changing color on us. Again, the red right over here on this side, this is vermilion or cinnabar. Cinnabar, all of these minerals were able to be obtained locally. They didn't have to travel very far for them. And then you can see all the way up there, the little corbel. That's the little thing that comes out like a little table. If you look underneath it, those palm fronds, they have kind of a brownish color on there. That's probably like a, a bronze gilt, which would have been a combination of copper and I believe zinc. Well, again, they try to make it look like stone. This is to be like a very strong building. The priests were thinking of the big cathedrals in Europe. So if we come down further into the nave, the nave part of the church right here was pretty much not highly decorated. It was just mostly white plaster. And up at the top, you can still see where some of the paint remains right up there on the top of that niche. And again, that's probably lamp black and white. Some of the original paint remains right down here in the corner. There was a dado stripe all the way around. It was orange, it was black, and then it was orange again and white as you traveled up the wall. There's a piece of original flooring that remains right there, that little piece. The floor underneath was probably crushed adobe. On top of that was a six inch layer of lime plaster that had been colored this terracotta color. And then they probably burnished it with river stone. All of these historical buildings matter. There are a lot of missions in this part of Arizona and in Sonora. And they all matter. San Javier del Bac, that mission has been going for a long time. It's still an active parish. It's beautifully painted, beautifully done. But this, this building right here is, is the bones. This is what San Javier looks like underneath all the guilt that's there. So it's very important, I think, personally, to hang on to things like this, to preserve them, because otherwise, how are we going to know? And how are we ever going to be able to preserve what we already have in San Javier and other places like that if we don't know what it was like underneath?